This is Star Talk. I'm your host, Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist. And this is Star Talk in the coronavirus. We are all social distancing, I think. I don't think I can catch anything from Chuck where he is now. Chuck. I, I wouldn't be so sure, Neil. <laughs> I don't know, man. Wouldn't it be funny if like we leaned over and you could see us in your screen? <laughs> <laughs> Man 11, thanks for joining us. Always glad to be here, guys. You know, we, we, we only pull you in when we need the big guns. And <laughs> the big guns in this case is we're going to we're gonna spend 20 minutes talking about quantum entanglement. Wow. And, cool. you know, I can mumble about it, but you can speak with great authority on this subject, uh, given your expertise as a cosmologist. So what can you tell us about quantum entanglement? Well, quantum entanglement is incredibly fascinating. I liken it to the chicken bone uh, game. So okay. let's say you and I, Chuck, we're like at, you know, Thanksgiving dinner or whatever, and we break a chicken bone, but we don't look at our pieces. One has a big piece, one has a small piece. You mean, then, you mean the wishbone? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the wishbone. The wishbone, okay. the wishbone. Okay. Yes. And presumably so, right. it would be a turkey bone, not a chicken bone on Thanksgiving. Okay, Yeah. <laughs> Are you a spy? Do you not know this about America? We, we just found out that J Jana is an activated Russian spy. <laughs> Her I cell know. just turned on. I have plant-based <laughs> plant Thanksgiving. They don't uh, have the actual bone. So the wishing bone experiment. It's the wishing yeah. bone experiment. Okay, so we break the, wish, the wishbone in half. We don't look at our pieces. One has a big piece, one has a small piece. I go to Andromeda, I look at mine, and I find out I have the big piece. I instantly know you have the small piece. Now, there's nothing surprising about that because it was established at the table which one had the big piece and which one had the small piece. Right. Now, quantum entanglement says is much weirder. It says we break the wishing bone, and it's at simultaneously – in a state where I have the small piece, you have the big piece, and I have the big piece, you have the small piece. It right. has not yet been determined. And, By any and, entity. No, it is completely in a what we call a superposition, but it has to match. We can't both have the small piece, and we can't both have the big piece. That's right? why the two states are not, we both have the big piece. It's I big, you little, you right. big, I'm little. Right. The two states. Exactly. But it, they have to match because they have to fit together to make the original wishing bone. Right. But it's not actually determined who has the big piece yet. And quantum well, I, mechanics allows well, we, for this. We can't know. Is there some higher dimension? Is there God who would know? Well, if you're a real adherent to quantum mechanics, you would say that you've disproven the possibility of omniscience being. <laughs> oh, okay. Because no, it is, it is not established. In some sense, when we, in our conventional thinking, are accustomed to see, thinking certain things are real, what's real is the piece of the chicken bone is real. We're sure of it. But it's not, in some sense, real. What's real is the probability that's real and that's determined, and that is absolutely deterministic and can be predicted, the probability. But the, the existence of the pieces of bone themselves are not yet actualized. They don't actually have a concrete existence. So you're saying um, you and I are entangled with each other. Right. right. And we have In to be entangled. Right. We have to be entangled because we can't both have the small piece because that's not cool. So we have okay. to be entangled in such a way that we make, we fit together correctly to make the original wishing bone. So okay. I can okay. have the small piece. You could have the big piece. I could have the big piece. You could have the small piece. Yeah. But we don't know which one it is yet. It's not just that we don't know. It's that it doesn't actually assume a precise state yet. Okay, so okay. When, when does it assume that precise state? Because at some point, it, this can't just be potential. At yeah. some point, there has to be a realization Actualized. of who has what piece. So yeah, when does that happen, so, and, and how do we determine that, and how do we observe that? So superpositions are very delicate. So when they do it, as you were saying, uh, Neil, like in the laboratory, everyone's trying to do this in the lab, and, and it's, it's very, very, very delicate. You have to have systems that are not disrupted or disturbed in any way. So there was this sort of mystique that once I, I went to Andromeda and I looked at it, that the act of my conscious looking 
forced it to assume a certain state. And that's not really quite right. What happened was just all the molecules in my body and the air that I'm breathing and the room, all of these things uh, destroy the delicate superposition. They, they knock it about it. Imagine, you know, a pencil standing on its end. So yeah, if you go and clumsily look at it, you knock it over, but it doesn't have to do with your consciousness. It's mm-hmm. just the interaction of all the particles and all the molecules and all those things that make it impossible for it to maintain this delicate state of standing on its point. Okay, and, so, now, so now the state becomes actualized in front of you. Yeah, now so now I look, know. and I know for sure I've got the big piece. I won. <laughs> <laughs> but what happened is I somehow seemingly forced faster than the speed of light from Andromeda to the Earth, instantaneously forced your, your state to also assume a precise state. Because you can't know that without me also knowing my state. Right. Well, you no, can't, I can well, know it. I can look at it and know it. And I instantaneously know you have the smaller uh, piece of bone and that's that. But you don't necessarily Whether, whether I've looked at yet or not. That's right. So, and, but, that's, but that's only because the, the, the two, can, there has to be that balance of big that's and right. small. That's exactly. the only reason. It's right. They have they have to fit together to make the original wishing bone. Exactly. It can't okay. be that I look at mine and then you also look at yours and we both have a, a big piece of wishing bone. All right. So, so the big the big question here is: mm-hmm. Can you encrypt messages this way, so that no one can jump in between and 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 capture your secret code that you're trying to communicate from Andromeda to Earth. Yeah, so funnily enough, I cannot communicate to you faster than the speed of light that I know I have the bigger piece. But so that, you, that information was communicated nonetheless. It was. So you look right. at your piece and instantaneously you see the small shard, but you don't know that, I, that you didn't do it. You don't know that it was you who collapse waves function. And so for me to tell you, I, I just use fancy language, sorry, collapse wave function, meaning forced it to assume a specific state. For, yeah. you, for me to tell you, I would still have to send you a mail in the post. I don't need send you. A signal. you. I don't need you to send me a signal because I know. <laughs> yes, so isn't that communication faster than light? It is communication faster than light, but neither of us know who was the one who did it. Exactly, because it's really, it's not communication faster than light, it's knowledge faster than light. The I knowing, can't have, the knowing I can't communicate knowing, faster than light, but I can right. definitely force that uh, wishing bone to assume a specific state faster than the speed of light. And wow. you could learn about it later. Like I could tell you, it was this time in Andromeda when I looked at the bone, I can send you a, a, a intergalactic mail in the post and you'll get it and you'll say, oh yeah, it's true. When Jana looked at the bone, I looked at mine a second later. But, and but if we, we, I'm thinking about cryptologists. So yeah. can you send, can I send, can we entangle a sequence of bits, hmm. if you will, right? And then you choose bits in a certain way that then collapse my wave function back here. And I say, oh, Jana has the secret rocket formula and it's this. In principle, yes. I can throw you that information faster than the speed of light. It would be hard to control which information I send to you because I can't know if I'm going to look at my which piece it's going to be. Okay, but let's say you look at one, seven, nine, and eleven. Yeah. Of the twelve particles that we entangled. Yeah. Okay, and that's a decision you make, and I will know. And I look up in a code, and I say, yeah. "Forget that it's oh, big yeah. piece, little piece. Forget Absolutely. that it's big chicken, little chicken." Mm-hmm. Right? I look yeah. at a code and say, "If she does one, yep. three, seven, nine, that means she's safe in Normandy with the rocket formula." Yeah. It, you sort of can do it. The problem is when you we can when you look at your um, at your piece, you don't know if you're the one who forced it to assume its position or if I was. Oh, wow! Oh, but it's a. I mean, there's probably some clever way around it, but let's say you, you, so it's not as though, it's not as though you can look at your particle and wait to see it. Right. That's what I was asking. Because then you could do exactly what you're saying. 
Right. You get a crypt message. I do four, seven, two, nine. And you look at your book and that means, you know, I'm safe on the shores. But, right. but once you're looking at the thing, it's not like you can watch it come right. out of entanglement into the state by looking at it. You no longer know if you're the one who forced it or I was. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So you, 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 it's not a good way to break up with somebody, is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a good way of breaking up? Yeah, yeah, it's it's not me, it's you. I mean, it's not you, it's me. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. You know, we don't know. We don't know who broke up with who <laughs> once the message is looked at. Wow. This, so, Jana, this, does this relate to quantum computing at all? I was just about to say, absolutely. So, quantum computing uses entanglement, and you know, in in a very delicate way. And the arguments are that the computational power of a quantum computer are incredibly vaster than a classical computer. And there's a lot of progress made on quantum computing, um, mm-hmm. not all of which I understand. A lot of it's some pretty wild stuff. And it's but very it's forefront stuff. It's well, changing every day. But it's, it's exploiting quantum entanglement as one of the quantum Absolutely. elements that are yeah. being expected. Yes. yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Right. So now can you tell me the difference between the entanglement and tunneling or are they the same? Where, where? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting question. They're both quantum mechanical phenomena. Yeah. Um, and they're related, but they're not exactly the same. So quantum entanglement talks about, you know, one thing that split and had to assume complementary states so that it could go back together again in the right combination. Um, but I could have a single particle inside a box. And because that particle is no more real than the pieces of the wishing bone, it has a probability of being on the other side. There's just some outside the box, outside the box, outside mm-hmm. the wall, on the other side of the wall. There's just some chance that it's there. You have to stop thinking of it as a billiard ball that actually exists all the time and mm. uh, is there. You have to start thinking of it as something that has a probability of being somewhere, has a probability of moving. So what you're saying is the particle in the exist. box, yeah. what, what? box is a convenient way to start thinking about it, but the particle actually exists in a space, not only in the box, but outside the box yeah. with a probability. No, I, I, I'm going to tell you what I just heard from mm-hmm. a non-astrophysics, you know, you just told me that nothing is f-ing real. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 seriously, you just, you just basically said nothing's real. Like, yeah, that's, I mean, seriously, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. oh I'm God. So, so, so here's an example also. So the tunneling, <laughs> tunneling is the idea that there's some probability it's going to end up outside the box. There is some probability that I will just pass through the wall unharmed. It's very, 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 very small. Um, but so here's another way of thinking about it. Like there's atoms where you have the nucleus and then you have these regions where an electron can occupy. And one electron can occupy like a lobe here and a lobe here. And it never, never, never goes between, never. But it's still one electron. And the probability of finding it here is some probability and the probability of finding it here is some probability. And you do the experiment over and over again and sometimes the electron's here and sometimes it's there. It does not make its way over in the ordinary billiard ball sense. Wow, <laughs> Chuck! I love that your face is, right well, now. I, well, I got to help out Chuck. Oh, that is so. I got to help out Chuck. So Chuck, <laughs> um, and uh, Jenna, correct me if I'm not saying this right. Mm-hmm. Um, these quantum forces and phenomena are particularly manifest at matter on its smallest scales, but as you start collecting matter together macroscopically, these effects end up. I don't know. Canceling is not the right word. Word. They end up being um the probabilities go way down they go yeah. way down so what yeah. would happen is chuck for you to end up on the other side of the wall all of your atoms would have to sort of have a, um, manifest that probability simultaneously and that's yeah. the 
that is an astronomically low likelihood. Am I, yeah. Did I get it right, Jen? Yeah. Absolutely. And okay. and also, like things like quantum entanglement are, are, again, very, very delicate. And so when I shine a light on it and I bombard it with photons or I like try to look at it or I grab it or I do whatever I need to do to make the observation, it's not about my mind, my consciousness. It's simply about the interaction of my apparatus and that thing. And, it, and, I, and I just break it to some extent. I break right. the entanglement. So then how can you ever see it? If you can't put light on it to see it, how do you ever see it? Well, it's a really interesting question. It's really a probabilistic um, experiment. You do it over and over again and you measure the probabilities and it's different than the probabilities that we would have if it was the classical experiment at the dinner table where we broke the wishing bone. It's you right. can actually measure with large numbers that it's a different, it, it conforms to quantum mechanics and not to the dinner table experiment. Wow. So I think Chuck has just lost a week of sleep right oh there. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got to land this plane. So, guys, so Jana, as always, thanks for being a friend of Star Talk. Always. I love being here. I'm, Always great to have you. I'm hoping, yeah, I'm hoping we'll all be together in person soon enough. Miss you guys. Start talking in too. the first. Chuck, always good to have you. Definitely. This is Neil deGrasse Tyson, as always, serving as your personal astrophysicist and bidding you to keep looking up.